real praise. Real miracles. Real love. The glory is here with Honorable Bishop Dr. Margaret Wanjiro. In every part of your two things you can do, either surrender to the enemies or surrender to the law. This morning I come to choose that every part of I trust the law. I'll surrender to the law. I'll not surrender to the enemies, but I choose to surrender to the law. Somebody surrender. Surrender in the name of Jesus. For your life is not your own.
season of rest and I want us to move on from where we stopped last Sunday we celebrated the goodness of the Lord and uh, it has been proclaimed by uh, the priest of the house that we are in a season of seven months of God rest praise the name of the Lord and in this month of rest today I want us to look at demonstration of God's power for us to enjoy total rest, for us to enjoy rest all around, we need the demonstration of God's power. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalms 37 and verse 7, David said, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. We rest in the Lord, we wait patiently on him. Every day of our lives, we want to wake up every morning and walk into our rest for the next seven months. But for us to walk in our total rest, we need our God to come and demonstrate his power. Praise the name of the Lord. So what David is encouraging us this morning to rest in the Lord and to wait patiently for him. Praise God. In our rest, in every situation, we wait upon the Lord. After hard labor, after a long day, everyone desires to take a rest. Praise God. We reach a point and say, I cannot live like this again. Hallelujah. When you are in a situation that is not living, a nagging situation, a situation that does not let you go, you want to reach a point and say, I cannot live like this again. And you want to stand before the Lord and stand before in his presence and declare enough is enough. I cannot live like this again. Enough is enough. I cannot be in diseases anymore at the time. Enough is enough. This is not my posture. I must walk in my rest in Jesus name. And here, this is where we want to allow God to demonstrate his power and to display his power in our lives. Displaying power in our lives, it's like it is not hidden. This is not the blessings that are under. These are the blessings that you are so blessed, we cannot hide it. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what I mean by when God displays his power. And I want us to look uh, at a story in the book of Exodus chapter 14. 
I know this story is not new, new to you, but I want us to look at a few things so that we see how God demonstrates his power in our lives. And the Bible says, Exodus 14 and verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Viharihoth between Migdor and the sea, over against Bashephon, before it shall yet camp by the sea. God is speaking to Moses because God has seen the affliction of the children of Israel. They are afflicted, they are in bondage, they are in great affliction. And so God decided to speak to Moses and then Moses to speak to the children of Israel. And God tell Moses, tell the children of the Lord that they turn. Tell your neighbor, turn. So God is telling Moses, speak to the children of Israel that they turn and encamp. Turning and encamping. Turning and coming to a point where you camp, place the name of the Lord. So Moses is told, these children, they must turn. If they are going toward the west, they turn to east. If they are going toward the south, they turn to north. So God tell Moses, now the children turn. And the word turn there is very divine. Praise the name of the Lord. It is not just another turn, but this is a turn that God has decided that the children of Israel for them to move forward. They must turn and they must come. Praise the name of the Lord. Before a uh, period between Migdon and in this place where they are supposed to turn to Migdon, they are told to turn and come between Migdon and the sea. And why the word turn is divine is because Megiddo means watch tower. So God is calling the children of Israel to turn to watch tower. Turn to Megiddo. So they must turn and face. They are between Megiddo and the Red Sea. They turn to the tower. They turn to the refuge. They turn to the place where they can get help. Praise the name of the Lord. So the children of Israel are commanded to turn to Migdo, the place of uh, 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 the place whereby it is known as the watchtower. Why are they moving and standing at the watchtower? Because God wants to demonstrate His power. For God to demonstrate His power, you and me, and you and me, we need to be standing in a specific place. And where God is calling us to stand. It's not anywhere. So God is telling the children of Israel, command them to turn. Praise the name of the Lord. And this morning I want to speak to somebody that this morning there are people seated in this place. There are specific areas in our lives that we need to turn in Jesus' name. We need to turn in the name of Jesus. You need to turn and allow yourself to turn around and stand in the watchtower in Jesus' name. First 3 says, For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them up. So God tell the children, Moses, tell the children to turn. And here is the Pharaoh who is thinking, Hallelujah. We thank God when you are in the watchtower, God speaks to you. And the enemies think they are winning. Praise God. How I bless God for anyone who hear the voice of God and decide to turn. Praise the name of the Lord. When you turn to the watchtower, the enemies are thinking that you are entangled in the run. The enemies thinking you are finished. The enemies are thinking you are going nowhere. The enemies are thinking that you never come out of the wilderness. The Bible says, and if Pharaoh will think, the king of Egypt will think, you are entangled in your wilderness. There are people who think this morning that you never arise from your ashes. Let me tell you this morning, turn by the voice.
presence of God. Turn and you see the manifestation of God's power. This morning, God is interested in that one person who will hear the voice of God. Turn to the watchtower in Jesus' name. The Bible says, Pharaoh will say, the children of Israel, they are, they are entangled in the Lord. Wilderness has shut them up. Let me tell you, when you go to the law and you turn to the watchtower, that is where it is you and God. Because let me remind you, the king of Egypt is not a joke. He's ready to destroy you and destroy you in the wilderness. He's not sparing you. Blessed is the one who turns uh, to the watchtower. This morning I want to speak to you and encourage you to turn uh, to the watchtower in Jesus' name. Where is your Migdo and who is your Moses? Uh, because Moses must hear God right. There are most of us here. We don't know who our Moses is. Because it's only the Moses who will deliver you. It's only the Moses who can hear God for you. And then it is the voice of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So turn to Megiddo. Turn to your watchtower. And you see where God is taking you. The Bible says, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart. This is when you go to pray. And instead of things getting soft, they harden. Oh, have you been there? All you sleep last night full of faith. In the morning you wake up, the faith has gone down. Okay. Okay, I, 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 I think... It happens. This is when Pharaoh's heart is hardened. And you know what Pharaoh is thinking? The children of Israel are wandering in confusion. His heart is so hardened. Things on the other hand are tight. And the, and the Pharaoh is thinking they will never get out. I'm getting to them. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's go to Micah and don't lose uh, chapter 14 of Exodus. Let me see, show you what happens when you are in that position. Micah 4 and verse 12. Micah 4, please, and don't lose Exodus 14. Remember the heart of Pharaoh is hardened, but they know not the thoughts of the Lord. Pharaoh in his kingdom, in his authority, he does not know the thoughts of the law. He does not know that Moses has been commanded for you to turn to the, to turn to the watchtower. Uh, uh, Pharaoh does not understand uh, the counsel of the law. He's been made hardened uh, so that God can come and hit hard in Jesus' name. For he shall gather them as the sheep in the floor. What God is doing when you turn to the watchtower and the heart of, uh, of Pharaoh is hardened. God is gathering them. God is gathering the children of Egypt. God is gathering them against you. Have you ever been in a brush? Even those you think they were on your side, you find they are not on your side. You, have you ever been in a position whereby you thought uh, the doctor has the solution? Let me tell you, he doesn't have a solution. But because they don't know the thoughts of God, they don't know what God is planning. They don't know what God is preparing for you. They don't understand. They don't understand the counsel. God will gather them as sheep in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So next time, when you find your enemies too much hardened, keep on moving on. Keep on obeying. Uh, keep on reminding yourself uh, the voice of Moses uh, that he has spoken out to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Never in life lose the voice and the word of your deliverer. You may look
look like you are sinking together. But as long as God has spoken, deal settled. Praise God. Amen. First eight. Let's jump to go to first eight of Exodus 14. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued of the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. Can you underline that word? They went out with a high hand. Hallelujah. They went out with a high hand. Tell somebody, I'm going out with a high hand. I'm going out with a high hand. In that sickness, I'm going out with a high heart. The sickness has refused to come out of me. I'm coming out of it with a high heart. In Jesus' name. Another translation say, they, were, they, they go out marching out boldly. So the children of Israel, they were marching out boldly. The heart, the heart of the Pharaoh is so hardened. He's still pursuing them. But as if you they have seen an enemy who is not batting. The enemy who is still nagging. I mean, God has saved you, has delivered you. But this enemy is still pushing on. This curse is still coming. You thought yesterday you broke the curse. Tomorrow you find a summit. Let me tell you something. What you have not conquered will still come back. Praise the name of the Lord. And in this season of rest, we need our God to demonstrate his power. If you allow me to go to verse 13, the Bible says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Why are they told to stand still? These enemies are coming. They are pursuing. They are not giving up. They are not even ready to see what God is doing. But allow them to come. The more they come, the more God will demonstrate his power. What you have not conquered this morning, I want to encourage you today to put yourself together. Allow yourself to arise in boldness and courage and move out boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. For the enemies you have seen, you will never see them again. What you see again is what you have not conquered. So the thing is arise and conquer in Jesus' name. So the Bible says, the hand of Pharaoh is so hardened, and they are crying. Let me tell you, I don't know how you behave if you find your Moses crying. Moses has the word, and you believe in his word, and now he's crying until God moves. And tell Moses, Moses, shut up. It's not time to cry. It is time to move. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want to encourage every Moses in the house. It is not time to cry. It is time to move. In Jesus' name. In that situation, it is time to move. Praise the name of the Lord. For it is only when you are moving, God will come and demonstrate his power. Praise the name of the Lord. What you can do when the enemies are coming, you can only surrender to them or trust the Lord. The choice is yours. Amen. For if you trust the Lord, he will come and demonstrate his power. First 12, first 21, sorry. Hmm. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by strong wind all that night. And, the, and made the sea dry land. And the waters were defined. Today in Jesus' name, there are some waters we will divide. There are some waters we will divide. I don't know about you, but there are some my waters I must divide in Jesus' name. There are some waters that every day have been rising up again 
Yesu. Today is the day we are dividing the waters. Today we turn to the watch tower and we divide our waters. In Jesus name, we are coming to divide the waters in our marriages, the waters in our businesses. We come to divide them. In Jesus name, why are you standing and where is your Moses? Because the deal is Moses means the rot and Moses means everything as far as this Red Sea is concerned. The ear of, of Moses is what God is using. The mouth of Moses is what God is using. Who is your Moses as you sit there? Because Pharaoh is coming. You better listen to the voice of Moses and obey and do what God is releasing this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for the waters in the house, the evil waters that have been rising in our families today. We come to divide them and cross over in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Psalms 114. And please don't lose Exodus 14. We are coming back there. Psalms 114. Hallelujah. Is your neighbor still there? Please find out. At least you are left alone. Woo. Bless the Lord. Amen. Psalms 114. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language. This is the time the children of Israel are coming out of Egypt. House of Egypt is the house of bondage, house of slavery. It is also a house of hard labor. It is a strange land. It is a place of making bricks. It is also a place of cutting grass. It is an unprofitable place. As far as God is concerned, it is a place of roses. Egypt, you will never be profitable. As long as you have a covenant with God, your covenant cannot work as long as you are in Egypt. I want to encourage you today, come out of Egypt so that you start to be profitable. Egypt, there is nothing good you can do. Had Reba a praise of oppression. And so the Bible says, when they were coming out of Egypt, a place from people of strange language, Judah was his sanctuary. Judah was his sanctuary. And Israel, his dominion. When they are coming out of Egypt, the children of Israel do things that the children of Israel could not have read behind. Judah and Israel, praise the name of the Lord. Judah, his sanctuary. Judah, the dwelling place of our God. Judah, where God dwells. Judah, the sanctuary of the Lord. And Israel, his dominion. The place of authority. The place of strength. A place where God rules as a king. Praise the name of the Lord. Who are you this morning? Are you the Judah? Are you the Israel? Or are you the both? For God to demonstrate his power. God do not demonstrate his power minus you in Jesus name. God do not demonstrate his power minus your business. God do not demonstrate his power minus your marriage. Everything goes hard in hard. Praise the name of the Lord. So Judah, the praise of his sanctuary, Israel, his dominion, Judah, the place, uh, the dwelling place of our God. Praise the name of the Lord. And first three says, ha. the sea saw it and it fled. The sea saw Israel coming. The sea saw Judah coming. It had no choice but to flee. It had no choice but to run away. Who are you this morning? Are you Judah? Because you need uh, to position yourself uh, in authority of God. Uh, there are some areas in your lives uh, you will only conquer when you 
are the Judah or Israel. If you are outside these two things, uh, you struggle forever. But today I want to usher you yeah. and become a covenant person yes. and be the Judah yes. and the Israel. Yes. So when they see you coming, Hallelujah. Free. what did the CC? Ask your neighbor for me, what did the CC? Hey. Ask your neighbor for me, what did the CC? The Bible says the sea saw and it fled. The sea took off. The question is, what did the sea see? What did the sea see? Now the sea did not see Moses. The sea did not see the children of Israel. The sea saw God's sanctuary and God's dominion. God's sanctuary and God's dominion. Ask your neighbor for me, what is your sea seeing? If your sea that you're facing does not see God's sanctuary and God's dominion in your life, that sea will stand there. But today, as the reverend said, with the covenant that you have with God, may your Red Sea begin to see the sanctuary of God in your life and the dominion of God in your life. Ask your neighbor for me, what does your sea see? Can you put your hands together? Hey! Amen. The Red Sea saw the presence of God coming. Hallelujah. When you go to Joshua chapter 3, there was the river Jordan. The Bible says the Jordan was full at the brick. It was the time of harvest. And the children of Israel are crossing Jordan. And what the Jordan saw, it is saw the ark of the covenant. The Bible says in Joshua 3, 13, the Lord less dead in the waters. At that particular time, what happened is, this is Jordan. The Jordan is flowing. And the Jordan is so full. And Jordan is not smiling. And Jordan is carrying everything. But wait until the Ark of the Covenant is upon the shoulders of the priest. Again, I want to ask you, who is your priest? Because your priest must be knowing they are stand with God. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Jordan is so full. And the Jordan see the Ark of the Covenant on the shoulders of the priest. And Jordan was running away. Please go back to Psalms 114. Where we are. We were. <sighs> what do the sea see? Hallelujah. Fast four. Jordan was driven back. Past the mountain skipped like rams. And the retro hills like clouds. Even the mountains cannot resist the presence of God. Even the mountains uh, cannot resist that covenant uh, you have with God. So where the battle is, uh, better you know the very covenant you have with God. If you have the covenant of healing, stand before that mountain uh, and let that disease see the covenant of healing. In Jesus' name. So even the mountains were skipping. Exodus 19 and verse 18. Uh, that's the story. Maybe go back. We go there. Exodus 19 and verse 18. And Mount Zion was all together on a smoke. Because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Can you produce your mountain? Bring it before the Lord and allow the fire all together to come down. The fire of God. Let that mountain smoke in Jesus' name.
that mountain that I've been standing, let it smoke, allow the fire of the Lord to descend upon that mountain. And the smoke thereof ascended, and the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. Praise the name of the Lord. Today, according to the word of God, today every mountain will skip in Jesus' name. Verse 5 of uh, uh, Psalms 114. What aideth thee, O thou see? Go back to Psalms 114. What aideth thee, O thou see? What aideth thee, O thou see? Imagine even that sea that have been working against us. You can stand before it. You know, the psalmist was reminding himself about the goodness of God during the time of Exodus. The psalmist was just asking the sea, what aided thee? What made you run away? Jordan, what made you free? What drove you backwards? What made you run away? The psalmist was enjoying himself. He knew his, his possession in God. And so he's able to confront these mountains and confront this Jordan and confront the sea. What aid are thee, O oh, thou sea? Thou Fredes, thou Jordan, you were driven back. Praise the name of the Lord. Today, the situation in this house, we want to declare they are driving back in Jesus' name. We don't know where they are coming from, but they will drive back in Jesus' name. And verse 7, tremble thou earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of God, of Mary. Hallelujah. I want to feel good about this. Trouble thou earth at the presence of the Lord. Trouble you thou deceased at the presence of God. But I can tell you, it is not the presence of God in your neighbor's life. It is the presence of God in you. Tell your neighbor, the presence of God in me. This is very personal. Hallelujah. Tremble. Tremble. Thou art. Tremble. You barrenness and poverty. Tremble. At the presence of God. At the presence of God. This morning. In Jesus name. We want to confront those mountains. And we want to command them in Jesus name. To tremble. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Psalm 68 and verse 7. Hallelujah. Oh my God, I'm almost through. Go to Psalm 68. Mm. Over. Do you have a drumist? And a keyboardist? And I have God like Jehovah. Okay. Psalm 68 and verse 7. Mm. Okay. Thou, O oh God, did send. Huh? O oh God, when thou went, wentest forth before thy people, tell your neighbor, God is going forth before us. When thou did march through the wilderness, you've never seen God marching. Marching in the wilderness. Marching in that barrenness. Marching in that poverty. God is marching, marching, marching. Who marching? Oh my God, I want to tremble at what God is doing in our lives. He's marching. He's not coming slowly. He's marching even in our wilderness. He's coming to our level. He's going further in through the wilderness. Hallelujah. Give us NIV translation. Mm. The 
earth shook. The heaven also dropped at the presence of God. When God is marching in the wilderness, he's marching and the earth is shaking and the heavens are dropping. God is not marching in our wilderness to make us feel good and to see that he was marching. He's coming and it is action time in Jesus' name. It is action time. God is coming to shake her, even the unshakable. Thou, O oh God, is send a plentiful rain where they did confirm by me. Have you given us NIV translation? This NIV? Okay, so it's okay. God went out before his people. The Bible says he marched through the waste land. Do you have a waste land this morning? Do you have an area in your life where you are wasting? Your children are wasting. Your marriage was wasting. The business was wasting. Let me tell you this morning, God is marching through that waste land. God is marching, marching through that waste land. In that sickness and disease, God is marching through the waste land in Jesus' name. And God is marching, giving us a burden shower. God is giving a plentiful rain. And his people will not be weary again. Hallelujah. I, 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 I don't know whether you are like me. That you are weary and you reach a point you say, enough is enough. Yes. This weariness must come to an end. Today, God has confirmed his inheritance. He has confirmed uh, you are in the wilderness. God is confirming where you have been. He has already confirmed. He knows you are there. You've been there, wasting away. You are in ruins. Things are bad. But today God is doing a new thing. Praise the name of the Lord. He's coming to give us plenty, plenty of rain. He know you are weary. He know we are weary. And God is giving us his plenty in Jesus name. Amen. First 10 says God has prepared his goodness. Thy congregation has dwelt therein. Thou, O oh God, has prepared of thy goodness for the poor. Praise the name of the Lord. God has dwelt in us. In our wilderness, God has come and he has confirmed we are there. And God did not come and just see and left. He is with us. Praise the name of the Lord. And he is with us preparing goodness for every one of us. He know what you need. He just came to get to know where you are suffering have gone to. He came to know how you've been faring on. He came to know vira economy imekuweka kando. Wacha ni kuambia mpendwa. God has prepared uh, some goodness for you this morning. Can we put our hands together for what God Hallelujah. is doing? Hallelujah. Psalm 77 and verse 16. Amen. The Bible says, The waters saw thee, O God. The waters saw thee. What will the water see? They will see God and they will be afraid. Even those waters were almost taking you away. They will see and they will be afraid. Their depths will be troubled. The depth of that sickness, the depth of that problem will be troubled in Jesus' name. And I'll go to trouble it. And I'll go to take over. And I'll go to trouble that thing that has been troubling your life in Jesus' name. The crowd poured out water. The skies went out a sound. Thy arrows also went abroad. Hallelujah. The depths will be troubled. Finally, brethren, we go back to Exodus 14. And I would encourage you to read the whole chapter. 
Exodus, 16, Exodus 14 and 15. Amen. What? That disease, what is it seeing? Hmm? Hallelujah. If you go to Exodus 15, it's a story, a song of Moses. And they are singing and they are saying, remember, they have already crossed the, the Red Sea. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel with a song unto the Lord and say, uh, say, so that's uh, 15. chapter 15, verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider are he thrown into the sea. The very horse and the very rider that were making Moses to cry, that were making the children of Israel to ask Moses, were not their graves in Egypt that we could have been buried there? The same people are singing. The Lord has triumphed uh, gloriously. The horse and the rider are he thrown into the sea. Let me tell you, it takes a turn. And when you take just one turn, uh, a new chapter opens. Praise the name of the Lord. I stand this morning to open a new chapter. And I declare... The Lord has triumphed gloriously. Yes. The horse and the rider, yes. they are of a throne into the sea. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. What is being thrown into the sea this morning? I know you came in the house of God this morning, crying and asking the Lord, who will come and bear me out? Who will come and deliver me out of this mess? Who will come and lay hands on me? that I get blessed. Uh, but I come to tell you this morning, the horse and the rider, yes. they are being thrown into the sea in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The horse, the rider, they are thrown uh, into the sea. The horse and the rider are thrown uh, into the sea. Hallelujah. Amen. like a star as a trumpet blows. Lift your voice, yes, it's Lord. the year of Jubilee, Jubilee. Out of Zion, out of salvation hey. Lord of Tychus, riding, riding on the cloud Shining like a star, as the trumpet, trumpet blows Lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, Jubilee. Out of Zion, heal of salvation Come. One more time, riding on the cloud Shining like a star as a trumpet blows, lift your voice. It's a year of to believe. Out of sight of the hills, oh, lift up your hands to the Lord. Jesus comes riding on the cloud, shining like a star. One trumpet is blowing up. Lift your voice. One more time, let me hear you. Oh, oh, oh. On the ground, you want to blow the trumpet? Like As the trumpet calls, lift your voice. It's a year of to believe. I don't try to hear salvation. Come on, go. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Let's not go 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 like Jehovah. 
Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. Let's not go like Jehovah. He comes, he comes, riding on the cloud, shining like a star. And the trumpet calls, lead your voice. He said, "You ought to believe." Out of Zion Hill, salvation. I said, "Jesus, he comes, riding on the cloud." Shining like a star, and the trumpet calls, lift your voice. You say you have to believe. Our Zion Hill salvation. One more time, behold, He comes, shining on the cloud, shining like a star, and the trumpet calls, lift your voice. You say you have to believe. Our Zion Hill salvation. 